That's better. Okay. Hello? Ow. Hi, welcome back to Wine Reform. So we are back with another tasting video. It has been a while since I've done one of these and I am so excited. We are tasting a Yellowtail Shiraz. Shiraz is also known as Syrah. Syrah, let me get my notes. All right, so Shiraz, it's also known as Syrah. And it has a couple reasons, why, a couple legends as to why it has two different names. And depending on where the grape is grown, the winemaker will favor either Syrah or Shiraz. So Shiraz. The name supposedly came from the historical city of Shiraz in Persia or modern day Iran. And it is said that a winemaker in Iran cultivated the grape in Shiraz and brought it to Marseille in 600 BC. Now it is thought to have emerged in France around 280 AD and uh, it is thought to have been cultivated there by a Roman emperor. So we've got two different stories. Was it a man from Persia or was it a Roman emperor? Did they both bring it to France? Did they both bring it from Iran or Persia? We don't know, but that's why it has two names, Syrah and Shiraz. French Syrah is pricey. It can get up there. So if you're looking for a more affordable option, which I am all about um, here at Wine Reform, then you're going to want to go with an Australian Shiraz. It's actually one of Australia's most popular grapes, uh, at least one of its most popular exports. And Syrah or Shiraz is grown all over the world, most commonly in France, Australia, Spain, Argentina, South Africa, the US, being California and Washington, Italy, and Chile. So it's in quite a few places. Shiraz or Syrah likes to be planted at the tops of hills where there's a lot less soil. So it's one of those grapes that on the vine it really does struggle to produce a richer grape. Because it produces this richer grape, then you get a very tannic wine. It is so tannic that if you hold it up, you usually cannot see through it at all. It is usually very plummy or very full of spice or sometimes even like I've heard people say it tastes a bit like bacon fat or you know, it's sort of jammy. It's one of those wines that it's really heavy and it's really heaty and it's kind of a treat when you get to drink it um, if you're into those heavily tannic wines, which I am. Because it is so tannic, uh, sometimes winemakers will actually cold press the grapes for days before they even go forth from the process of maceration. And that's just supposed to soften a lot of the heavy tannin that comes through in the skins and the seeds and whatnot. We are tasting Yellowtail Shiraz. Yellowtail is a one of those affordable wineries uh, out of Yenda, Australia. Now Yenda is in New South Wales and it's pretty far it's pretty far west of Sydney. And Yellowtail is actually um, a lovely little winery that was founded by the Casella family in 1957 when they migrated to Australia from Sicily. So really the goal of Yellowtail wines is to bring together family and that the way that a good Italian meal or a good Italian wine would do, along with the laid back sort of casual nature of Australia, at least from what I'm told. I'm American, so do I know. Uh, so we will see what we think of Yellowtail's affordable Shiraz. All right. Again, I went to my local liquor outlet and I paid $5.49 before tax for this bottle. You know, we're gonna see, once again, if a cheap bottle of wine can be a good bottle of wine. Got my glass, got my wine. This wine is one of those that has been packaged with a twist top instead of corkscrew, 
Once again, twist top is an alternative method of packaging wine, and that usually means you're not keeping your wine for long, so drink it in a year, two years at the most. Don't put this thing on its side and let it age, because it's not going to age the same way a wine with a natural cork would. Un poquitito. Very, very little, because it's a twist top. No bugs, no spills. The first thing we do when we're evaluating wine is we look at it. This wine has a seriously purple plummy color. Don't know if you can see it if I do this, but if you can tell, it's, look at that. You see that color? Deep purple, definitely on the darker end of the red wine spectrum. Great clarity. They filtered this wine very well. Color, plummy, great clarity. The second thing we do when we are tasting wines is we smell it. Oh, I'm getting a bit of tar, a bit of pepper. It's very smoky. Scratch that. It's peppery and it's smoky. Okay, so I'm getting notes of pepper, um, smoke, and unripe blackberries. Um, so the pepper and the smoke definitely came forward before the blackberry did. Um, so yeah, it was not as fruit forward as I was expecting it to be. Let's taste it. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Yellowtail. I see you. All right. Yes. Okay. Flavor? Immediately, I got a, a tart cherry. Almost like if you had a batch of ripe cherries and you had one that was just a little underripe, that's what this one tasted, like, immediately. It's very warming. Yep. So, tart cherry, blackberry, and there's a little bit of, um, can't quite put my finger on it, one moment, pepper. Green pepper. Um, in terms of flavor, uh, the smokiness and the pepperiness didn't come forward as much as it did in the nose, but with flavor, I got sour cherry, uh, sour blackberry, and a bit of green pepper. It's got a medium finish because it's kind of lingering on my tongue. In terms of tannin, it's medium to heavy bodied. It's not the heaviest bodied uh, Shiraz I've ever tasted. In terms of Shiraz, it is more light bodied. In terms of wine, it is medium to heavy body. The sugar to acid balance was phenomenal. Like, this wine felt very, it felt like it coated the tongue very nicely. I didn't get an immediate zing of acidity, and I know the tannins helped to cut that. It wasn't saccharin sweet like a dessert wine or a port would be. So it was, it felt very balanced in that regard. I really, I really like it. I really like it. I'm a huge fan of wines that really have a presence, you know? This wine has a presence. In terms of pairing, I would pair it with barbecue. I'd pair it with like a cheese plate. No, like a fancy cheese plate, like the kind where you have brie. I don't like brie, but I think this would pair very well with it because brie tends to be a softer, uh, it's a softer cheese with a softer flavor, and I do think that this would balance that out really nicely. I want to pair this with, uh, like a fruit spread and cheese and grilled corn and pulled beef. I like pulled beef better than pulled pork. I don't like pulled pork, but I like pulled beef, so I'd pair it with that. Honestly, it has such a rich flavor that it would really hold up well against those, um, against the heavier foods that you like to eat in the fall or in the winter time when uh, you're looking for something that's gonna stick to your bones, this wine would complement that food very well. Recap, it's got a very purpley, plummy color, great clarity. Um, the nose was pepper and smoke and blackberry, and the palate was sour cherry, sour blackberry, and a hint of green pepper with a medium finish and a medium heavy body and a phenomenal like perfectly balanced sugar to acid ratio so all in all a very pleasant wine pair this with your heavy meals pair this with your barbecue pair this with your fancy cheese plate 
put it with those like rich fall foods, you know? This wine makes me feel like I could play guitar. So thank you for joining me again for this episode of Wine Reform. It has been a blast getting to come back and do another tasting. And hey, if you like what you're seeing, uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. I want to hear about your experience with Shiraz or your experience with any Australian wine. Please share. I would love to hear. So thank you again for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.